morning, good morning, good morning. Time is drawing nigh. Let's, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Prepare our hearts for God's word. Amen. And prepare ourselves just to have a good time in Jesus' name. Amen. Because God been good to every last person because of the sound of my voice. Because you were, you were able to be able to get up this morning come into the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. Somebody somewhere couldn't get up. They got to listen to it on the street. But God gave you the strength to be able to get up and come to the house of worship this Sunday morning. I'm not talking about next week. I'm talking about for this Sunday morning. Because next Sunday is not promised to us. So while we're here this Sunday morning, let's give God the honor. Let's give him the glory. And let's give him the praise while we can. Amen. Amen. Because we serve a true and living God. Amen. 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 The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Oh, yes. And the world is they that dwell therein. Yes, yes. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Ye ever, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing word. Yes, and I want y'all to join in, with, join in with me singing Blessed Assurance because Jesus is mine. Yes. And you know, if you listen to the title of that, that's this song, it's, it's personal. Mine is personal. You're talking about mine, your blessing. Each blessing, each everyone blessing. Amen.
Our scripture this morning will be coming from something very, very familiar. So can you go to the book of John? The book of John. Mm -hmm. That's the book of St. John, mm -hmm. chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Book of St. John, chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 11 and go all the way down to verse 18. That's the book of St. John, chapter 3, starting at verse 11 all the way down to 18. Amen. Please, I implore you to say Amen when you have it. And if you don't have it, please say hold up. Amen. I did hear hold up. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't got to be happy. I'm going to be happy with Y'all ain't going to make me now. And if you're down, I'm trying to pick you up. So. I'm happy. Amen. That's what we need to hear. Amen. See, this is December. Yes. Amen. Now, how many people we know didn't make it this far? All right. Amen. If that don't get you excited. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, we got it? Jesus. We ready for it? Amen. Amen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's the book of St. John, chapter 3, starting at verse 11. And we'll go down to verse 18. Amen. We there? Amen. Amen. Can I can I start reading? Hold on. Hold on. I'm holding on. Hold that mule. Amen. 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 God words reads as such. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> together? Amen. Okay. God words reads as such. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I had told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let's say this together, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it goes on to read, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In the very, very last verse, He who believe in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. We have just read you the book of St. John chapter 3 verses 11 through 18. May God continue to have a blessing to the hearing but most of all the doing of his word for the good edification of our souls. Amen. Deacon Sanders Amen, 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 amen. I want y'all to join in with me in him near the cross. And we all know that cross has power. Because our Savior died on that cross. And church, he died on that cross for you. Yes, come on. He didn't have to do it. But he did it because he loved us just that much. Amen. So we know that God loved us, Jesus loved us just that much. Let's give him the, the, the praise and glory that he truly, truly deserves. Well, Amen. Yeah. So let's say near the cross this morning as if though this is going to be our last time saying this song. Because we do serve a true and living God. Amen. Amen. I'm ready.
ancestor our limbs, Father. Set us out in our right mind, Father. So that we can come out one more time and give you all the glory and all the honor that you deserve. Father, we give you the highest honor, Father. We call and we say hallelujah to you today, Father. Father, you are worthy to be praised today, Father. Father, you are worthy to be praised today. We call with the highest praise today. We come to say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, you've been so good to us, Father. Father, you've been ready to do good to us, Father, but then we've been to ourselves. Yeah. Oh, Father, we just can't thank you enough, Father. Yeah. Oh, Father, we just give all the glory to you, Father. Yeah. Father, we just thank you, Father, for giving us your son, Father. Oh, Father, that he hung on that rugged cross. Oh, Father, that he took all the sin, Father, of this world, Father, on his shoulders. And Father, we say thank you for that, Father, for loving us that much, Father. Oh, Father, we just ask that you be with St. Simon this morning, Father. Father, we ask that you just be with the sick today, Father. Father, be with the ones that were even today, Father. Somewhere, someone lost a loved one, Father. And they need you right now, Father. They are calling your name. That Father, I said, Father, I said, Father. We need you right now. Help us, Father. We will weep, Father. We ask for everything. Oh, the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we need you. Right now, Lord.
we don't say thank you for nothing else. We are able to open our mouths. We were able to open our eyes. We have our ears and we can hear. We got legs and we can walk. We got a tongue and we can speak. We can clap our hands and we got to touch someone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Said, there was so many didn't make it to the 4th of December that was here on the 3rd of December. There were some who got up this morning that had not made it to this hour of the day. Church, we got to say thank you. We got to say thank you. You're going through, thank you. You're not going through, thank you. Things are all right, thank you. If you're down in the dumps, Thank you. If your body's in pain, thank you. If you're in the peak of your health, thank you. In other words, thank you. God, God, thank you. This thing for all things great and all things small. Because nothing is too great or too small for the God that we serve. He's not so large that he cannot look down on the smallest of things and give his grace. Hallelujah. We're thankful for that grace that was given for today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we send up our prayers, yes, yes. two in particular, I, I, I really need to call by name, Sister Linda Lee, amen. amen, who continues to struggle with the after effects of COVID, yes. as so many do. Uh, Sister Ramon, I, I bet you probably still got a little bit of it yourself, hallelujah, but we're going to thank God that that's already done. Amen. And we're going to thank God for Sister Lee. Yes. And also, I was informed about Brother Brother Tomlin, who I uh, believe is still in the ER, oh. amen, Sorry. amen. So we lift him up. Yes. Yes. These are the ones that I know. There are so yes. many that you know yes. that I yes. don't know. Yes. But thankful that God knows each and every one. Yes. All of our faults, all of our needs. Yes. This is our yes. God. He knows all of these things. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Just on my spirit today to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to be thankful. Every, every day. Amen, Brother George. Every day. Every day is a day to say thank you. No yes, matter what yeah. might yeah. befall yeah. us, yeah. God says yeah. that things would befall yeah. us. Yes. But in all of these yeah. things, we thank must you. endure. Yeah. And while we are enduring, we yes. give thanks. Yes. We yes. give yes. thanks. Yes. In all things, we yes. give thanks. Yes. Yes. Because no matter how little we might think we have, that somebody looks at us as being yes. rich and wish they had what we had. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So yes. we thank God for every little bit. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. What about the announcements? Well, first of all, do we have any visitors? I don't believe that we do. Anybody hiding back there in the corner? No. no. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ken folk, we back here in the church at the Lord's house again. Hallelujah. Yes. Mother, okay. do we have any announcements? Just to remind us, Pastor, uh, that Saturday is our uh, Black History Month. Yes. Groundbreaking ceremony meeting. And also, hopefully, prayerfully, our last bylaws meeting. <laughs> so if you have any language you want to put in the bylaws, please get it to be compared before Saturday. Because hopefully, we're going to be ready to vote to sign off. We yeah. cannot keep waiting. We are holding up things that we should not be holding up. Amen. We want the church built. Amen. It's going to take possibly five months to build a church. If we keep playing with the bylaws, we're going to pass the deadline for everything. Mm. We can always come back and add Mother Pastor Tract and divide to the bylaws. But we must approve these bylaws and get them who the mortgage company so they can release the money. <laughs> also, birthday, happy birthday to all the December people. And Deacon <laughs> Brother Charles Rember Jr. birthday is the second of December. Happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> and uh Mr. Carter, I heard you have stumped down last night. <laughs> For your birthday celebration. All right. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> As I said, about, and also next Sunday, our Sunday school teacher will be Minister Benita Fullwood. Amen. And the subject is God's promise to David. Amen. Also yesterday, it was the book signing for Dr. Boat at New Hope Church. It was Sister uh, Perry and I attended. <laughs> And the, the flyers on the bulletin board if you want more information. But it's a very worthwhile thing. And I know Sister Perry purchased some books. So 
Uh, if you're interested, you still can purchase the books. And Amen. the flyer will tell you what it's all about. Uh, those are, oh, one more announcement. We want to extend bereavement to the Fullwood family who lost one of their patronauts this morning. Amen. So we are sending sympathy to the Fullwood family. Amen. 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 And to reiterate, to God be the glory, deepest and dearest heartfelt condolences to the Fullwood family. And, and indeed to all who lost a loved one. You know, whether that was recent or whether that was a long time ago, the, the, the effects just don't go away. Amen. 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 They just don't stop. Amen. Because you don't stop loving somebody just because they're no longer here. Those, those who were here, you know, they were permanently and will be permanently a part of our memory and a part of our spirit. And we'll always miss them. Amen. So our, our condolences to all, but especially to you, amen, who lost a loved one. And after we hear a hymn of meditation by our praise team, uh, a word from the Lord. Amen. We'll hear a word from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us give the praise team a hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. she's doing, she's utilizing the gift that God gave her. Amen. And somebody else out there has the gift that God come on, that come you can on, use. Come on. All right. okay. come so, on. use your gift that God gave you to uplift the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because we do say we're true and living God. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. I want y'all to pray for us as we sing this song. All right. Amen. Sing along. No, sing along. <laughs> Amen. 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 <clears throat>
abuelo. Nobody. 
nobody. Amen. And like I said before, these were just ordinary people, just like we are, Amen. but we're given extraordinary things to do. Amen. But God will empower us to do these things. He's not just going to send us out there because he says as sheep among wolves, Amen. I'm going to send you forward, but he's not going to send you out there without a shepherd. Hallelujah. Yeah. So there'll be somebody there. And also he says, I will not leave you comfortless. Yes. I will have a comforter on the inside of you. And as we talked about many, many times before, that same power to raise him from the dead lives on the inside of us. Yes. Let us call on that power when we need it. Amen. When we think we need it, when we don't think we need it. Because we only think we need it when we're down. Amen. Hallelujah. We need that power when we're not yes. down. Yes. We need that power when yes. we're joyful. Yes. Amen. We pray harder when we, hallelujah, Thank hallelujah, you. hallelujah. Thank God. Thank, Thank God. For, forgive me this morning, but <laughs> on my way in, I prayed, and the Lord just lit a fire underneath me, so I asked God to bear with me today. <laughs> Amen. Scripture this morning will be coming from the book of Exodus, 32nd chapter of the book of Exodus. Amen. From the book of Exodus. And I truly pray that all is well with everyone. You know, and I, and I can I can kind of say with a lot of confidence that it is because if it were not, if things were not truly well, you couldn't praise the way you do. Amen. You couldn't sing songs the way you do, Amen. and you would not be in the Lord's house this morning. You'd be someplace else. Because I always say, there's always a lot of things that you can do, a lot of places that you can be, other than being in church on Sunday morning. But something inside of us, that part of us that God's and God's alone says, you got to get up. You got to get up. There's somebody down there that might need to see you. Yeah. Somebody that might need to shake your hand. Yeah. Somebody that might need a, a smile on their face. Yeah. And, and, and ultimately, there's a word from the Lord in his house. This is his house. Yes. This don't belong to us. Does not belong to me. Does not belong to any of us. This is God's house. Amen. God is building this house. Exodus chapter 32. If we dare say amen, if not say hold on. <laughs> amen. Got one hold on. Exodus chapter 32. Amen. You'll hear a couple of pages turning, but that's all right. We got we got time. We got time Sunday morning, Ken folks. We can we can sit up here and listen to a word from the Lord. Good to see everyone. Amen. I thank Amen. God that we can see one another yet again. Amen. So it is good to see everyone. It is good to be seen by everyone. Amen. 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 And the, despite again all the distractions, all of the things that have come against us since the last Sunday, and I know that there's been a lot. I don't I don't have to ask. I can see it in your faces. And I can hear it in your praise. It's been a rough week. Amen. 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 On this level, there's going to be some rough weeks. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some rough days. Amen. This is why the Lord says to be of good courage. Yes. The song that just got through singing the song, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Yeah. These are the days and these are the yes. times that we yes. must do that. Excellence. Excellence, chapter 32. Are we there? Amen. 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 We're going to be starting at verse number one. Exodus 32, starting at verse number one. Amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people brought off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a golden calf. Mm -hmm. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation, and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, and the hearers, and the doers, and the holy and precious word, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Verse number seven, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people, which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Mm -hmm. And to use as a food of thought this morning, being led by the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about backsliders. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, this yeah. is not a beat up the backsliders sermon. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Loosen up. <laughs> right. Amen. But if the word cuts you like it cut me when I read this, amen. It's the word of God. It is the word of God. 
It ain't personal. Amen. And uh, 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 I forgot to give you what I give you every Sunday. Like I said, I get excited and get ahead of myself. But while you woke up today, someone else took their last breath. Amen. Be thankful for this day. It is a gift from God. Therefore, blessings and good day yet. I greet you again. I did not come to make friends or entertain you. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen. Man. Backsliders. We've talked about it on many occasions, and we say it many times that it's not something that's going to come upon you suddenly. And believe me, beloved, all the things that we talk about today, I promise you, you face them one, or you might face all of them every single day. Because the challenges are there, and they are real, and we face them, and sometimes they knock us down. Yeah. Sometimes we give in, because the Bible says that there are things that easily beset us, Amen. Amen. and they're still here. They were not taken away because we gave, our, we gave ourselves to Christ. He didn't take anything from Peter when he said, to get behind me, Satan. Amen? So everything that's going to befall us is still here. It's still available to us. So we have to, we have to be on our guard. Amen? Amen? Exodus 32 and 8 says, They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Backsliding usually starts with an absence of spiritual leadership. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. There are many pulpits, not only in this country, I can, I can say around the world, right. where you've got somebody standing up here who's a dead man walking. Right. Maybe not even right. believing the words they're speaking themselves unto right. you. Uh -huh. For some, you know, hallelujah, you can only do and say what you know. So there are many who just do it out of ignorance. They don't know any better. They're just going by what they were taught, right. what was passed yeah. down to yeah. them, and what yeah. they truly, sincerely believe to be yeah. true. There are others who are businessmen mm -hmm. who may or may not know the word of God, but who have got online and got them a degree and they've studied and they know how to make you shout. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. They know how to make you say amen. Yeah. They know how to make you jump up and down and yeah. shout hallelujah. <laughs> they know how to get inside of your head yeah. and inside of your heart. Yeah. Amen. Glory. But as thought of a word of God, they have no word of God to give you. Amen. It's all commerce. Mm -hmm. It's all merchandise. Yes. It's all for sale. It is not a house of prayer. It is a den of thieves yeah. run by a thief who stands before you and, beloved, and I cannot, I cannot in good conscience put it all on them because we are to study Amen. to show ourselves approved. Amen. 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 Now, if somebody can stand up here and beguile you to that degree, part of it is on him, but most of it is on us. Because we have not done our part and filled ourselves with the word of God. Yeah. But a lack of spiritual leadership yeah. is usually where backsliding begins because normally the leader is a backslider. Yeah. There are some who will not stand up here and preach about some things because those are the things that they're living. Yeah. And because those are the things that they are still holding on to. I can't, I'm not going to preach a backslider. Like I said, this is not a jump on the backslider thing. Right. But these right. things are going to accost us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Those of us who are called by the name of Christ, yeah. Yeah. these are the things that we're going to face. Right. We're going to face right. leaders who are not spiritual. Right. Amen. Yeah. Who have a form of godliness. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But have no power. Yeah. Yeah. Have that form that got the form down yeah. to an art. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Can come in here and have us running down the aisles and running outside the restaurant yeah. and leave here empty. Yeah. Because there's no word of God been put into you. You've been stirred up from the inside. Your emotions and your mind and, and you're so full of everything except the word of God. And you cannot go out here and survive. You'll go out there that next week and go through pure hell and not know why. Why? Because you don't know how to defend yourself. The person who's supposed to be leading you has led you down a wrong way. The other, the, 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 when we were talking about being spiritually blind, uh -huh. blind leaders of the blind. This is what we're talking about right here. And then, so yes. this is something we must do. Hallelujah. If somebody is standing before you, myself included, if I'm not giving you what you know to be a word of God, you need to get my hind parts out of here. You do. Amen. I, amen. amen. Don't sit out there and take stuff from me that you know ain't right. Amen. We've been down that road. Yeah. We've been down that road. Yeah. Let us never, ever, ever go down that road again. Yeah. And not only in St. Simon, but wherever the Lord might place you. Yeah. If you're sitting under somebody who's not giving you a word of God, you need to get out of there. Yeah. What does the Lord tell you? Get away from them blind leaders of the blind. Get away from them as quickly as you can. And this is not to run down the street and tell everybody, oh, he ain't no good. They will see it for themselves if they get into the word of God like you into the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 First Kings. 
First Kings chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 offers this. All right. It says, but King Solomon loved many strange women mm. together with the daughter of Pharaoh, right. women of the Moabites, yes. Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, yes. and Hittites of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of his father David. So we've got to be careful of our associations. Yes. Who you associate with. Scripture tells us you can't walk together unless you agree. But what are you agreeing on that you're walking together, to walk together with somebody and y'all unevenly yoked? And then we can't always go about, well, I like so-and-so. You know, we came up together. We've been knowing each other since kindergarten. You know, we used to share pacifier a long, long time ago. It does not matter. If they are not walking with Christ, if you are not walking with Christ, one of you is going to get turned. Yeah, right. I promise you, one of you is going to get turned. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've said it not very many times, a pimp and a preacher can't walk together without one of them getting turned. Yeah. And most of the time, it's not the pimp. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because the pleasures of the world, hallelujah, we'll, we'll get to that in the scripture. Amen. But we've got to be careful who we associate with even now. Hallelujah. All right. We are not so strong on our own as to stand up against the wiles of the devil. We can't do it. We cannot do it. We still think we can. But we are big enough, bad enough, bold enough to, that we can stand toe to toe with the devil. Church, you can't do it. You can't do it. If you could do it, you wouldn't need God. You wouldn't need a Holy Ghost. You wouldn't need a spirit. You wouldn't need anything if you could stand up against the devil on your own. But we cannot. So we must be careful who we allow in our lives. Amen. You also yes. must be careful uh -huh. these lives you involve yourself in. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's everybody who's going to need some help yes. at some point in yes. time. Yes. But we have to be spiritually discerning yes. enough yes. to know that I am investing myself into a house that's on fire. Yes. Yes. I, amen. I'm investing myself into a personality that's not going to do me any good. Right. They're going to pull me away from right. my God. Right. 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 Amen. Yeah. This association yeah. is going to pull me away from the things that I know. Right. I'm supposed right. to be studying right now, but i got to go take care of this person. Right. I'm supposed to be at church this morning, but i got to get this joker and ride to work. No! Yeah. we got to be careful of those things because slowly but surely, slowly but also surely, we're going to find ourselves sliding. You're going to find yourself sliding back. Poor leadership, yes. evil association, that's a deadly combination. How I'm here to tell you. And they walk with us, they walk before us, they walk around us, they work with us, they're in school with us. We see them in the mall and they're everywhere. And we got to be aware of these things. Let us let let this sharpen one another. Let that iron keep one another sharp. And then even if you got to get on somebody's nerves, tell them the truth. Yes. Then tell them the truth. Hallelujah. It don't matter. Tell them the truth. That's our job. Yes. That's our job. Yes. If we can't do nothing else for somebody, tell them the truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If, you, if you love them, tell them the truth. Yes. Tell them the truth. Hallelujah. Yes. Second Chronicles 25 verses 11 to 14 offers this. Talking about King Amaziah. It said, And Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people. And went to the valley of salt and smote the children of Seir ten thousand. And other ten thousand left alive did the children of Judah carry away captive. And brought them back to the top of the rock and cast them down from the top of the rock that they were all broken in pieces. That's, that's a heck of a way to go. Somebody take you and toss you across the hill and you, you just fall apart when you hit the bottom. Things back in those days, these, these were not good people. When they talk about these folks, when you capture somebody. It was not just to take them. You took them and you destroyed them. You destroyed everything they had and you kept all the goods for yourself. Amaziah was not a good guy. There weren't many good guys around back then, especially when they went to conquer. Amen. And it goes on to say, but the soldiers of the army which Amaziah set back, that they should not go with him to battle, fell upon the cities of Judah from Samaria even unto Beth Horon and smote 3,000 of them and took much spoil. Now it came to pass, after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. We must, must, 
be cautious of worldly success. Yes, yes, yes. Amaziah was very successful in what he did. Yes, he was. He was very successful. Smoked 10,000 here, 10,000 there, and another 3,000 there, and took everything they had. Mm -hmm. And got back and said, hey, I, I like this God, I'm going to worship this God. Amen. We can't get home and worship our house. Amen. We can't worship our bank account. Amen. We can't worship the vehicles that we drive. We can't worship the business that we run. We can't worship any of these things. This, these are things of success. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we see it all the time. And we know people who are that successful. Yeah. Right. And believe, don't get me wrong, don't fall into the trap of God don't like rich people. That's not true. That's not true. That's a trick of the devil. He used it against us many, many times with scripture. He takes you to that verse that said it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle and then, then for a rich person to go to heaven. So now we just say, I, I can't get rich. I can't have that stone. Come on, don't do that. We can't do that. All the silver and the gold belong to him. I'm sure he don't mind us having just a little bit of silver and a little bit of gold. Look at King Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a rich man. Abraham was a rich man. I mean, really, really rich. Job was filthy rich. Godly men. So God does not hate rich men. Amen. And they will have you on the other side of the coin thinking that God hates poor people because he don't like nobody poor. Hallelujah. But then there's so many things that lift up yeah. poor people, amen, because of the woman with the two mites. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That Jesus yeah. loves poor yeah. people. Yeah. Amen. But what does the Bible tell us? For God so loved, we, we just read it. Yeah. For yeah. God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. So there's no yeah. rich, there's no poor, there's none in the sight of God. We are all equally worthless. Without the shed blood of Christ, we would not, none of us be able to stand before God. So we must be careful of our success. First of all, thank God for what you got. If you are successful, thank God. There's no Christian businessman, businesswoman who does not give God thanks every day. Every day. Because if it had not been for the Lord, you would not have that success. Amen. Amen. And I'm not just talking about material riches. You know, some of us think we're successful with our knowledge of the Word of God. And we get hung up on it. We get puffed up about it. We carry it and we wear it on our shoulders like, 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 like such a crown of, I, I am so knowledgeable. I, I am so spiritual. I, I can do all of these things and we lord these things. And now we've created our own righteousness. And we'll lead other people. Lead other people. Blind and lead other people. And now you're talking about an absence of leadership because we think we know and we don't know. So that part of success can puff us up beyond the use of the God cannot use you if you puffed up. Because you are your own God. Hallelujah. He can't use you if you are your own God. Because if you can't see him, he can't use you. Hallelujah. So we must be able to be seen by God. Be careful of worldly success. Evil associations, oh, yeah. absence of leaders, all of these things yes. can cause you to slide. Uh -huh. yeah. Because they're yes. so, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, so. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many times, do you know, uh, 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 there, there are some of us, you know, I know Deacon Perry, you got to work some Sundays. Deacon Remmett, you got to work some Sundays. Deacon King, you got to work some Sundays. There's a difference. There's a difference between something that you, because <laughs> when the word tell you you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> Amen. You know, and especially us as men, we got to take care of our houses. So it's one thing, you know, and, 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 and so many times, I don't, want, I don't mean to dwell on this, but there's a whole lot to say about it. I knew of an assistant pastor who did not go to church one Sunday because he wanted to go to a Jaguar game. Wow. And so that's where he went. And you know what he said? God know my heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. God really does know your heart. And if your heart was in the church, that's where you would have been. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But this is spiritual leadership. Evil association. Worshiping their own success. I'm so good that I can miss a Sunday in church. This is the assistant pastor. Amen. This is the assistant pastor. I can miss a Sunday in church. I'm just that good. That arrogant. That successful in what I do. I can do these things. Mm. And slowly but surely, he slid. Mm -hmm. And he kept on sliding. Yeah. And he kept on sliding. <laughs> until the Lord slid him home. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. I don't know if that was the cause. I'm not there. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Amen. Amen. But like I said, backsliding is subtle. And the things that we talk about today might just be the tip of the iceberg, but I promise you, you're going to run into them sometimes daily. Sometimes one, sometimes every single one of them. Amen. Amen. Luke 8, 13 offers this. This is Jesus talking about the parable of the sower. Verse 13 says, They on the rock 
are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root which for a while believe and in a time of temptation fall away because all of the word that got into them didn't go no farther than their ears and never made it down to their spirit it had no root amen it was just there that Sunday and then you know the people that we coerced to join the church that Sunday and you never ever see them again the word never got in because it never got further than their mind and it got into their mind and all the rest of those thoughts came up you don't need this you know why, why are you going back there with all the people they crazy anyway why are you hanging around with them why, don't, don't be giving your money to that preacher you know all of these things go into the person's head and we come to give them baptism the next Sunday and no, they have no show never got in there was no roots when the temptation came, when the trial came, whatever it was they went through from the time that they said they were going to come until the time that they were supposed to come back, it got in, uprooted them. You know, I should say just pulled them away because there were no roots. There was nothing in there to hold on to. We don't give them enough sometime church to hold on to. Amen. We should never, ever, ever coerce somebody into joining the church. Never, ever do that. Never, ever. We've been down that road. We've been down that road. But well, we sang all these beautiful songs and done all of these wonderful things and got whoever, whomever, whosoever on this emotional high Amen. and told them, come on now, now's the time. Give yourself to the Lord. Jesus tells you, count the cost. Count the cost. Foxes have <coughs> holes. Birds have nests. But I don't even have a place to lay my hand. Are you sure you want to join the church? Are you sure you want to be a part of the body of Christ? Amen? Because if not, that beautiful word and them beautiful songs are going to get into your mind on Sunday and on Monday you go on the job and somebody in your favorite parking spot and you're out there cussing them out. It never got in. Hallelujah. This is not to say some of us don't do that. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> because none of us walk in absolute perfection. We still have our faults, our flaws, and our defects and shortcomings. They have not been taken away. We did not stop being human when we accepted Jesus Christ. Right. It is our humanity that allows us to do these things, but also our humanity can get in our own way. But, but, but again, uh, we can never ever be sure that the word has gotten in. Only time will tell uh -huh. if that person comes back, if these people come back, if we are here every Sunday. And not only that, if they start showing up at Sunday school, if they start showing up at Bible study, if they're still around after the service is over talking with the deacons or the ministers or in fellowship, not even, well, maybe, maybe that is getting in, but those others, we just hit the surface and bounced off. We may never, ever, ever get that opportunity again. We might not, you know, because once a person leaves, especially if they got a bitter taste in their mouth, that church ain't do nothing for me. I went in there and did all of that singing and praying and hollering and jumping up and down, and I'm still miserable. Well, welcome to Christian life. Hallelujah. These things do happen, but we must be cautious of that. We must be cautious. Amen. Uh, 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 and I forgot to tell you, we're talking about shallowness. Amen. For something that just doesn't not get in deep enough. Deep enough. And it must. And this is, it, it takes time to do that. It's not going to happen day one. Amen. None of us got the spirit day one. Amen. We did. We might think we did, but we didn't. It took time. Yes. It is still taking time. And I promise you, yes. Yes. it is not as deep in you as it is yet going to go. There is more in us that God has. <laughs> And there's deeper places in us that God can go because God does really know our heart. Yes, he and he knows that there's still room in that heart for whatever he wants to do. But we've got to allow him to do it. Amen. Luke 11, verses 24 to 26, off of this. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest. And finding none, he said, I will return unto my house, which I came out. Yes. Keep that in mind. I'll return to my house. Amen. Yes. Was I came out. And when he cometh, he yes. findeth it swept and garnished. Yes. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more yes. wicked than himself. Yes. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Yes. Key verse. Yes. I will return to my house. My house. They still think they own you. Uh -huh. Amen. They still got. They still got a key that they can get back in. Amen. And some of us have been there, you know. And, and I can speak, you know, for myself. You know, so many times I kicked drugs and I kicked alcohol and went without it for a long, long time. But when I went back and started that habit up again, it was considerably worse than when I stopped. I can tell you that for a fact. 
because my house was clean. Uh -huh. I knew the house was clean. Uh -huh. I thought it was my house. Amen. But here he comes with his key. Amen. And he got back in. And he got back in and brought all of his partners in there to celebrate with him. Amen. What about, you know, the, 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 the guy that Jesus, uh, Jesus met who's possessed by a demon. He said, who are you? Uh -huh. My name is Legion. Yeah. There was hundreds in him. Yeah. Hundreds in him. Beloved, I, I, I don't know how that feels to have that many on the inside of you, but I'm pretty sure that we know what it means, how it feels to have them on the inside. Of right. when you have that feeling that I'm not in control of myself. Uh -huh. How many times have you said, I could not help myself? And there are times when you can't because you've yielded to the person who owns the house. Uh -huh. They still got their key and they still can get in. Thank For myself, <coughs> hallelujah, I fell to this, um, uh, uh, um, this myth of what they call non-alcohol beer. Mm -hmm. I had quit drinking. <laughs> I, amen. I quit, oh, for almost a year, I quit drinking. Yeah. You know, but All the right. fellow said we we'll have here some non-alcohol beer, Sister Della. Yeah. What I did not know is that it only had to have a certain percentage right. to be called non-alcohol. Right. Yeah. Non-alcohol beer got alcohol in it, yeah. right. and it was enough. Yeah. Turn that key, yeah. amen. And he got back in. And I became a raging alcoholic like I've never been before in my life. And whatever you have had that you have gotten rid of and cleaned your house, and when you step back into it, you find yourself out of control. I don't know what that was, and I can't speak for anybody. But if you've been down that road, you know what I'm talking about. Amen? My house, hallelujah, I come back to my house. They still got a key. When we give ourselves to Christ yeah. and let Christ rule our lives, He'll shut that door. Amen. And the word tells us that the door that he shuts, nobody can't nobody knows. open it. Amen. All right. So he can't get back in. Yes. This does not mean that you let somebody new in that house. You don't drop one habit and pick up another habit. Hallelujah. We can't do that because then you just defeated everything that you fought so hard for. Amen. And the work of Christ has done no good in your life. So we must be careful of these things and that emptiness that we allow in our life. Again, it's slow but sure. Yeah. And then that one non-alcohol beer led to two, led to three, led to a six-pack, and now we're back on the, we, we, we're not unleaded anymore. Amen. We're going for the good stuff. Hallelujah. John 6. Hallelujah. Let, let that go. John 6, verses uh, 63 to 66, off of this. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man could come unto me except they were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. So we're talking about a lack of insight. Yes. We must have spiritual insight. We can't do these things. The things that I'm talking about, beloved, we can't do on our own. Amen. We can do none of these things. We tried. Mm -hmm. We've tried. Even when we joined the church, we still thought that we could do things on our own. We thought that we could perfect ourselves and make ourselves good enough to stand before God. We can't do it. Amen. Amen. We got to have spiritual insight. That's what's going uh, to allow you to say, I want you in front of me to preach to me. I want you to lead me. I want yes. you to take me by my hand. I want you to feed me. I want you to do these things. Without insight, again, we are blind. Being led by the blind, and we'll follow them wherever they go. Wherever they take us, this is where we're going to go. And Jesus said, you are not going to sit here unless my Father brought you here. Amen. But so for those of us who think we got here on our own, I got news for you. God called you here. Amen. God got you up. Amen. God got you dressed. Amen. God put gas in your car, food on your table, and it was God that got you here. Amen. And I thank God that you came here. I thank God for everyone. Amen. Amen. So we've got to have spiritual insight. And finally, uh, 2 Timothy verses 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 offers this. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He says, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For demon has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. If nothing else, in all of the things that I've talked about today, all the things that the Spirit has given us today, this one will hit you every single day. Amen. If you turn on your radio, it's going to hit you. Mm -hmm. If you turn on your television, it's going to hit you. If you put on your favorite gospel station, it's going to hit you. Everywhere you go, it's going to hit you. 
This is what turns Lot's wife into salt. Amen. 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 This is why Lot went that way in the first place. Because if you remember the story, mm -hmm. he could have gone any direction. Right. Yeah. You know, Abraham said, whatever direction you go, I'll go in the opposite direction. He wanted to move near Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can't blame Lot's wife completely for what happened to her because this is where her husband lived. Mm -hmm. Again, Lot, it, Lot was a rich man. Yes, he was. He had a lot. Ab that's why him and Abraham had to separate mm -hmm. because they both had so much. Right. Yeah. They couldn't stay in the same place together. Right. So a lot wanted to be near the city where the action was, yeah. where the clubs were, uh -huh. where the restaurants were, uh -huh. where the, all the party people were. This is where Lot wanted to go. And Abraham said, fine, I'll go in the other direction where there's land, yeah. where my sheep can graze and I can raise my family. Yeah. So, amen. So uh, 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 in the meantime, you know, she got accustomed to that lifestyle yes. as the same way with Demas. He says, I have loved this present world more than this journey you got me on, Paul. I ain't going through nothing but grief since I've been with you. Yeah. It's been a rough walk with you. Yes. People yes. have threatened our lives and, yes. and threatened to beat us and tried to kill us and, and starve us. And, yes. Man, yes. look at here. I'm going back to work. It's, it's kind of like the children of Israel. Uh -huh. You know, yes. I know what I had in yes. Egypt. Yes. I had food in Egypt. Yes. Yes. I, I was a slave, yes, but I had, I had clothing in Egypt. Yes. And then I had a roof above my head, but you were still a slave. Yes. You know, that's the thing that they didn't get. Demas was still a slave. Yes. Lot's yes. wife was still a slave. Yes. For whatever thing that caused you the most is what you are endowed to. That's what's got a hook on you. Amen. And this is where you're going to go. So the love of the world tempts us every single day. Yes. Be broke and don't think the world is not going to tempt you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Be homeless yes. and don't think the yes. world is not going to tempt you. Yes. Open your refrigerator and it's empty and don't think the world won't tempt you. All right. I know how you can get a couple of dollars. I know who you can go to to do this. The things of the world. Never mind that God said, I will supply all of your needs. I supply all of your needs. You ain't supplying them quick enough, so I got to do something on my own. Let me go out here and hustle a little bit. Let me go get my grind on so I can do this thing. The love of the world, the way the world did things, is still in us. Hallelujah. And sometimes when tri now sometimes, a lot of times, a whole lot of times, when tribulation comes, this is where we slide back to. To the things that we know. To that comfort zone that I know I was successful here. I know I could gain things here. I know I could do things there. This journey, this Christian journey that I'm on, I don't know what's around the next corner. I don't know what God has planned for me. I don't know what's going to be up tomorrow. I don't know if there'll be tomorrow, but I know this works. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. Because when you do, you are falling back into the love of the world and everything that the world has to offer. What does the Bible tell us? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. This is what we're walking back into when we give in to the love of the world. And like I said, not one, maybe all of these things. And, and believe me, beloved, this is the tip, to, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much out there. Because black sliding, backsliding is a gradual process. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? It's a gradual process. You can get drawn into something so much that it takes you away from the word of God. You can get drawn into things like Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Hallelujah. And now you're back into being into the revolution. More than you are to the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody like myself who loves to play music, I can hear a song and I want to go strap my guitar on my shoulder and go back out. And, and, you know, and God says, no. No. Mm -hmm. This is not what I have for you. Amen. That's not why I gave you that. Amen. And I think about and I talk about music a lot. Now, I think about people like uh, uh, Luther Vandross, mm -hmm. you know, who had one of the most beautiful voices that I think I've ever heard. And could you imagine that singing "Nearer My God to Thee" Amen. or "Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross"? Yeah, Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Versus somebody like the late Daryl Coley, who I think also has one of the most beautiful voices that I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Amen. Leandria Johnson. You can say what you want about her personal life. That woman can flat sing. Hallelujah. God gave us these things. Amen. God gave us these things yes. to draw others. I should say to lift him up. Because yeah. he said if I get lifted up, I will draw. But he gave us these things to lift him up. To be able to lift him up in song. To be able to lift him up in praise. God gave you all that energy, Sister George. Gave you all that energy. Amen. Gave you what he gave you, Master God. Gave you what he gave you. All of us have something. Yes. All of us have something. Amen. Do you hear me, church? Amen. There's nobody sitting in here, I don't care what you might think about yourself, Amen. that does not have anything to offer 
in the building of the kingdom of God. Amen. Everyone has something. Amen. We must seek God to find out what that is. Amen. Amen. It might not be what you think it is. Right. There might be something that you are good at right now, but God doesn't want that. He puts something else on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. I didn't know that I could fix computers until he go, told me to go to church. I didn't know that I could preach until he said, get up here and preach. Didn't know that I could teach until he said, get up here and teach. You don't know what you're doing until you ask God and he says, move. Amen. Even if you're afraid, Amen. move. Yeah. Move. You know God's voice. Yes. My sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. And if you hear that voice and it tells you to move, you got to be like David. Yeah. Move with haste. Yeah. Amen. Move with haste. No matter how big that giant is, you got to face. Backsliding is a giant that we face yes. every day. Yes. Yes. The temptation is there to go back and do what we're comfortable with. You know, we always talk about comfort zones and things that take you out of the comfort zone. The Word of God will constantly do that for you. And that's a good thing. Amen. That's a good thing. Because yes. when it does, that's Amen. growth. Yes. That is growth. And I thank God for the growth of this body. Amen. Amen. And if you're at a place where you say, well, I don't know what's going on. You know, I found myself on a place the other day, uh, sitting in a doctor's office. And I looked around church and nothing made sense. Nothing. Me sitting there, the people in the office, the music on the radio, nothing made sense. Until I read a word that says, if it all seems irrelevant, that's a good thing. Because you're now moving from one place to another. So if you find yourself in that place where nothing going on in the world is making sense to you, you are now becoming in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you heard a word from the Lord this day, not my excitement, not my yelling and screaming, not my jumping up and down, and none of the things that I stood up here before you and done. And I thank God to be able to stand before you yet again. Because it was Him who energizes me, it's Him that gives me strength, and in Him that strengthens all of us to do everything that we do. But if you heard a word from the Lord, not meaning to coerce or conjole anybody. But if Christ is not the head of your life, if he is not your Lord and your Savior, because he must be both. For there are some who says, you can be my Lord, but you can't tell me what to do. You can't be, amen. You, can, you, you can't do that. You can't tell me that. But Jesus must be both. And we must give in to him thoroughly, wholly, and completely. Yes. He gave his all for us. We give our all for him. If that is you today, I don't have the luxury of assuming that we are all in Christ. If you are not in Christ, don't let another second go by. Amen. Don't let another moment go by. Don't walk out of these doors without Christ being the center of your life. And if he is not, now is your time as we sing.